Rob, what are you interested in buying next? I, I, I'm sure there's a few different watches, but what's got the eye? Okay, so everybody does this. You'll have a running list, oh, yeah. you know, of like a wish list or hey, if this becomes my phone. if this becomes available for the, you know a good price, I'm yeah. buying it. Everybody does that. One thing that has shot to the top, not necessarily the top top, but the top of my list. Ooh, blow. <laughs> no, close, really close. Um, no, one thing that has shot up there was or is a calendar function of some sort. Okay. I shouldn't say of some sort. It, there's two options, an annual. annual or perpetual. And I go back since we had just had the whole leap year thing and people talking about it and everybody on Instagram and every, every other avenue showing the date changes, you know, of the longa and this and that. Oh, yeah. Right? So... I told myself, like, okay, I've been collecting a number of years. You've not owned that complication? I've never owned an annual or a perpetual calendar. Okay. And I thought to myself, why not make it a goal of mine, uh, a relatively, I think, attainable goal? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm giving myself kind of a broad road to go down. I'm not limiting it necessarily to one watch. They're not affordable complications. No, they're generally. not. Generally, they're not. Yeah. So I, I shouldn't. Yeah, it's attainable in the fact that I'm not limiting to one watch. Okay. So it's more the function or the the okay. complication. Totally get that. So yes, it is. It is an expensive watch or an expensive complication. Yeah. But there's multiple ways you can get there. Sure. So I thought to myself. Perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So with with this goal of mine, I told myself by next next leap year. So four years. Okay, four years. Mandatory. All right. Mandatory. Have to have something. Again, I, it's it's a long goal. It's I think an attainable goal. Sure. But I thought to myself, it's a way to get something unique, something different. Uh, I know you had the annual calendar. Yeah, I had a Sky Dweller yep. that was an annual calendar. Yep. Super cool watch. Right. I think that is readily available um, in, in various ways. There's sure. modules. There's, you know, depending upon which way you want to go. Yeah. Like, for example, the viewers can get a free deal here. Or not a free deal, but a free tip. There is a Longines. What are they? Master Collection. Yeah, I think. And, and it has an annual calendar. It, it kind of almost just looks like a basic... Uh, almost like an office kind of dress watch, if yeah, you will. Yeah, and, and it's got I'll a, drop in a picture. Yeah, and it's got a day date. You can pick those up for like fifteen hundred bucks. That's pretty good. Fifteen hundred bucks. It's an ETA base with an annual calendar module on uh-huh. top. No joke. Looks like a great little office watch. And I mean, it's almost like a Seiko day date window. Yeah. It's not it's like super refined. But for fifteen hundred bucks, you're getting for that complicated. Yes, you're getting an annual calendar that is normally dumb. like a five. Like f- dumb in a good way. Yes, so you can find stuff like that all the time. You know, Omega for like thirty five hundred bucks, you can get those Aquaterras. Have you looked at the Globemaster? So the Glo- annual calendar. I love the Globemaster. Hi, Pan. Yes, so that actually is on my list of okay, potentials cool. yeah. because it's unique. It's historic. And it's cheap. It's cheap Relatively speaking. Right. Again, the, the, the whole preface of this is cheap and affordable or obtainable. All of these are in quotes. Right. Sure. Right? Yeah. I, I don't want... I mean, you're welcome in the comments to say how stupid that is. That a, a, First that, word problem. Yeah. Rob is a snob. <laughs> exactly. Oh, obtainable perpetual calendar. No, no, no. I understand. Again, this is a, a lofty goal. This is a goal that I'm giving four myself year four years. Yeah. Right? So if, it, if I did have to save for four years... I could have some time to get there, yeah. right? So again, I'm not saying I'm just going to go out and buy something tomorrow, sure. but um, so anyways, that, like that 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 long jeans, fifteen hundred bucks. That, yeah. that oh, so back to the Globemaster. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Um, the Globemaster is visually unique, yeah, historical. Mm-hmm. It's got some good tech in there, right, with the coaxial and all that it, stuff. It, and isn't it Gerald Genta did the original in the late '50s, uh, yes. like the pie pan and stuff? Yep, yep. that's his yep. unheralded design. I'm telling you, you've got all sorts of cool visual intrigue. Like, who else is doing uh, an annual calendar that looks like that? Nobody. For the price. For the right? price. Even a sky dweller, if you're getting stainless steel, is going to be thousands more. Yeah. You know? I, I would I would imagine, without looking it up right here, I would imagine probably five, six grand, you could probably get one of those Globemasters. Don't you think? You, are you talking about used? Yeah. Yeah, used. 
I don't and know. And I should have prefaced that, that I'm open to any and all options. Gotcha. This is not just through ADs. Yeah, I haven't looked, but I would assume it's it's going to be a nice discount from retail. Yeah. For that watch. Yeah. Uh, not an in demand watch. Yeah. I think you could find a deal. Whether, and, it, whether it's five or six. And it's, I'm it, not sure. yeah, it's going to be something that you can wear every day if you wanted. Yeah. You know, like, so that would be definitely on my list. Um, so then, like we just talked about, as far as used, new, all that, yeah. there's, there's two roads that I have to choose to go down, right? Of like, do I go down the new uh -huh. or do I go down the used? Well, if I go down the new, it's a pretty, it's, it's slim pickings, yeah. right? Because again, yeah. I've talked about it in other videos. I have a family. I have other responsibilities. I can't in my current state, go buy the Patek, this and this, this. You know, I can't go buy the Vacheron. Would I, if I could? Sure, but I can't. Um, so it leaves me with Frederic Constant, right? We had a, we had a, a meeting with Actually them. Actually in-house. Yes. Like not taking a module, even though that's a great way that Longines makes that complication entry level and attainable to people. Frederic Constant's an actual in-house design movement. Yep, it's a fully integrated. Swiss made. Yep. And, Beautiful finish. And so we, a few months ago, I think it was, we had a Horological Society of Utah meetup, yeah. and they were present, and they had the high life. Yeah. And I'm sitting there looking at thing, that thing going like... Are you Until the bar kicked us out, right? <laughs> yes. They're like, wait, you're selling $20,000 watches? Give me a cut. <laughs> yes. And so I'm looking at this watch, and I'm going like, this wears good? Yeah. It wears really well? It looks nice? It's got a crazy complication? Under 10K. So here's here's where it gets even funner, I think, Rob, is yeah, it has value in and of itself at retail because I, I mean if you if you want an in-house Swiss complication like that, yeah, you're not gonna be spending ten thousand. No. That's gonna be a lot more than a that. A lot more. So there's value there. But with Federic Constant uh, itself, when you go used, you can make a killing. Like as a buyer, like oh, you're yes. saving so it's silly how yeah. much you save. I've seen some of those high life ones go for like six. Yeah, brand and they're like new, you know, from these these uh, secondary you know areas, like six grand for <laughs> a in house Swiss made integrated sports look perpetual like actually counter. Actually, a nice quality. It's a, and I've handled enough nice watches to to know when it's a good watch. Yeah, like. It's a nice watch. So here's what I, th like, looking at you, Rob, knowing you, you've been in this hobby for a long time. Like, you own watches that are in that price segment. So I would say if, if you were, like, getting into watches and you've never spent 6000 before, I'd say, no, don't do that. You, yeah. Like, go buy an Aquaterra or something or a Speedmaster. Right. Uh, but knowing, like, how you've experienced so much all price categories and stuff like I legit think you would have a blast send, uh, spending that much on a Frederic Constant. That's a good point. You do have to get to a state in collecting where you have handled all those Omegas, Breitlings, yeah. Rolex, whatever. Insert you know you know whatever brand here. Yeah. You get to a point where you're like, yeah, those are great watches, and I am confident and and, and secure in my collecting, yeah. where I could so, show somebody my Frederic Constant, and they're like, I've never heard of it. Like, okay, well, cool, I'll tell you about it if you want. And if you don't like it or you don't want to know about it, that's also cool. I don't yeah. care. Like, you're not collecting for anybody no. else. I wear Mickey Mouse watches. I wear G-Shocks. I wear literally anything. If it's something that I like. Just not Hublot. <laughs> there you go. That's one it. of these days I'm going to get you to like like one of their <laughs> no, designs. I think I, I, I don't remember the exact model. There was there is one that I I think I told you that I would consider, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like I'll if I like it, I'll buy it, I right? Like that. And that's it. And and it's for me. I don't sure. collect for other people. I don't try and show off and impress other people. I love it, right? Because ha you know that ninety percent of the time, nobody even notices your watch, anyways. But there are collectors like that is what they like. Yes, that's why they buy a Rolex. Yes. that's why they go Omega Breitling and. Why do you like, think people buy the offshore? Tag Heuer. Offshore, yes. Nobody in their right mind wants that watch because it wears well. <laughs> well <laughs> the Royal Oak's yeah. a different story. The Royal Oak's right? another story. It's a different story. The offshore is a flex piece. Yeah, it's true. And you, it doesn't wear that great. It doesn't like look great. It's not good value. It's not good value. It literally has every knock against it except for AP, AP. Royal Oak 
offshore. Can you imagine, uh, maybe this is tangential, but would AP still be in business if they did not have the Royal Oak? No. I don't know that they would either. No. I mean, crazy to think about. I I mean, really, realistically, if you look at it, all their other stuff. Nobody likes. Well, it's, I, I'm oversimplifying. Yeah, again, some people like Spider Man and Black Panther. <laughs> so many, only so many of those five hundred thousand dollar watches you can sell. Or like the Code Eleven Fifty. Actually, that's kind of a cool the, watch. The, but think about it. It took. That's a slow burn yeah. because when that first came out, people hated it. Though. People hated it. They were like, "What is this? Uh, 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 AP's making Timex now. You know, like, <laughs> what is this thing?" And they've since refined it, added different dials, different, yeah. you know, materials, and, and it's kind of come into its own. People are like, okay, it's actually a good, pretty good watch. Yeah. Sorry. So, you, so I was just okay. going to say, yeah, like that, I think that the, uh, the, the Frederick Constant is a realistic option for me if I want to go the new route, mm-hmm. because I'm sure not going to get the, uh, you know, the Patek. No. But then the question becomes, do you do this or... Do you look for the value in the, the used market on something that's neo vintage? IWC, oh, yeah. IWC, Glasuta. You've got a variety of really, really heavy hitters that you can get in that same ballpark. I have seen perpetual Glasuta for what that Frederick Constant goes for new. Really? For like nine eights. Like, like usually high eights to like low twelves, still under five though. Or well, it can be. Yeah. 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 Or sorry. No. So that's new. Okay. That's new. That's new. I'm talking brand new sticker price for that Frederick Constant. Okay. You can get IWC, Glasuta, all these other ones. Yeah. In that range. I mean that. Well, that's what that's what happens though when you're buying at almost any price. It's like, should I buy a Seiko five or should I get a G Shock? Yep. And people will be opinionated on both. Uh, $2,000 price point, $5,000 price point. You know, it, the, the one thing it's that all could... about like, what do you value most? Are right. you wanting to resell? Are you keeping forever? What's your intent? Like, is this something that you are going to wear once every four years, every leap year? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Well, I can guarantee you it's going to stay on the winder for, for, you know, for one thing yeah, yeah. Um, when I'm not wearing it. But I, I really had this dilemma in my mind because what furthers the, the, uh, conundrum, if you will, is some of these these used ones, these neo-vintage ones, sprinkle in some precious metal. You know I'm all about precious I, metal. That's, I know. <laughs> I, I now I'm like, I, I, I'm excited. I'm I, like, let me sit up. And like, I didn't say the secret word that you, the gold, okay? Yeah, so, yellow gold. Yeah, yellow gold. I'm telling you, you can get precious metal, IWC, Glasuta, I can go down a few others, yeah. for seriously like 9 to 10 12 at the top end all day long. They're out there. So they are out there. But the problem is, is do you want to pay yeah. that much for a 20-year-old watch that you a maybe lot of don't say no. maybe you don't know when the last service was? Yeah. No, I mean there's there's big things to consider, which is nice that you have four years to figure it out. Right. But um uh, like I think when you get a steel value like Let's say the Frederic Constant. Uh, just you're so satisfied with that killer value. Right. At least in my experience, that doesn't last a long time. But when you get something, let's say it's a neo vintage with some precious metal, uh, there's something about gold that I think is just has a timeless allure. So maybe I get tired of that Frederic Constant in six years from now. But if I have a vintage Glass Huta or IWC or something, that's at least my own opinion, and I, I might be biased. That's more of a generational type heirloom, hand me down type of watch. Well, again, but. I'm with you there, and that's why I haven't bought the Frederick Constant. You know, it's like yeah. I definitely think that there's value for your money. I definitely think that there's something to seriously be considered. But if you could, if you told me, hey, yeah, you could pass down an IWC uh-huh. precious metal to your son. Or to hell, if my daughter hey, wanted, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So I could pass it down, and they they're getting a solid gold perpetual calendar. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like who wouldn't want that? <laughs> so we will need to talk about this in the coming four years as we ramble yep. and talk watches because I'm interested, and I'm sure I'm not alone, to see what you ultimately end up doing. Like 
because you might be leaning this way now and then next year maybe it's maybe there's a new release that comes out yeah. or maybe a killer deal pops up on Chrono 24 and you're just like ah that's got to be it like I want to see what happens and so. that's why I gave myself such a long window people might think like that doesn't make sense why would you give yourself four years that's an insane I mean half the time people can't even wait six months but did you say did you know watch collectors are crazy? Because if you didn't, <laughs> now you know. <laughs> right. But I, I also, pr I purposely gave myself that much time because it makes me appreciate the watch more because I'm doing the research. Yeah. I might find some Glossuta that I've never heard of, uh, sure. this, this specific model or this caliber. So what do I do? I go in and I start trying to research about that caliber. Does it have problems? Is it a lemon? You know, like yeah. some of these forums would be like, this sucks. This cost. Couldn't get parts. Yeah, couldn't or get that. parts or, you know, it never ran right, blah, blah, blah. Like, I want to go down those tangent yeah. roads that here or there and go like, oh, wait, people are saying that this is freaking awesome. Or, hey, this is a derivative of the the original IWC, you know, perpetual or, you know, you never, whatever, you, you know, information you can get. Yeah. That's also part of the experience so that when you wear that watch and you're able to speak to it and the journey that you went on it just makes you appreciate it that much more i'm with you and i'll uh, let me end with one question uh i mean recently we had an eclipse here in the united states uh was a big deal everyone was posting about it lots of people were traveling uh to the place of totality across the country i don't know if you did or not but uh, uh, no um do you think that that event spurred some more interest in moon phase watches? Guaranteed. Like, I, I found myself looking at some more moon phases. I mean, I've always liked the complication, yes. but when you actually see something block out the sun, yep. and it, it's not something you see very often, it's a really cool experience. So it's like, like I have, I don't know if you've seen this, I have a moon phase already. Um, but I, I kind of want to get another one. Right so now. I'm with you there. Like that's when you see those events and you you figure out maybe some of the history of the complications and why they created the moon phase. You know what? First of all, why is it important to track the phases of the moon? You know those kind of questions. Good question. Right. Yeah. It's kind of a if, when you think about it, it's kind of useless. Like, do I need to know the phases of the moon? Right. Or? At some point, people did. Yeah. Right. At some point, at some point in history, it was imperative for people, a certain people, to know when the werewolves are coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> but, but I mean, you go down these roads, right? And it's like, well, why did they even track that? You go down that and figure out how the moon phase was was. Uh... Or past cultures using a lunar calendar as yep. opposed. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I it's fun. It's, it's really fun. It's super fun. It's a way to enhance your appreciation for the hobby for the watch, for everything, you know? Again, to, to have something to talk about to some random person on the on the train so that when they yeah. go to work, they're so like, they you're not going to believe who I sat by some nut job. <laughs> you make them regret their life choices yes. by meeting you, right? Yes, exactly. No. They, they see you looking at moon face stuff and they ask you what you're looking at or whatever, and next thing you know, 20 minutes later. But I bet you, in the course of your life as a crazy watch collector, like your level, my level, you're going to meet people that will really think that that stuff's cool. Yep. Uh, like I, I bought something today at a camera store downtown, and they're like, "Well, wh what do you use this, you know, this tripod for?" And I'm like, "Well, I just film watch videos." And he's like, "Well, what's the coolest watch that you've filmed recently?" And I'm like, "Well, it's the White Dow Speedmaster, and it's cool because Ooh, of this." That is and, he, and he looked it watch. up on his computer, and he's like, "Oh, Omega, I've never heard of that." And I was like, "Well." Fun fact, this was the design that NASA outfitted their astronauts with, and they wore this watch on the moon. He's like, whoa, that's cool. Like, it wasn't one of those weird things. It was a nice interaction that I enjoyed, I think right. he enjoyed. And who knows know? where that little, that little seed goes. Yeah. Maybe you created a watch nut. You know? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe some watch crazy dude, like, he just screw cameras I'm going into watches now you never yeah, know you never know right or maybe he does buy one nice watch because of this conversation yeah it's cool yeah it's awesome